I don't know if you've ever had pneumonia or someone in your family has. Then you'll know how serious a disease it is. The huge impact it can have on you. Well, one of the main causes of pneumonia or contributing factors is poor air. In other words, the air that we breathe can sometimes lead to pneumonia. In some cases in our country, parts of Mpumalanga have some of the worst air pollution in the world. Professor Charles Feltman is at the Division of Pulmonology in the Department of Internal Medicine at Pitts University. Professor, good afternoon to you and thank you for your time. I mean, how serious a problem is pneumonia in South Africa? How prevalent is it in our society? Thank you very much, uh, Stephen. Uh, thanks for having me on the show on this World Pneumonia Day. And thank you to the uh, viewers and the listeners. So pneumonia is a very important problem. Um, for, if you look, for example, uh, on a global scale, it's one of the leading infectious disease causes of death in the world. In South Africa, uh, we don't have uh, reporting or uh, uh, on pneumonia uh, as such. It's not a notifiable disease. But if you look at the mortality statistics, uh, the group of infections called influenza and pneumonia, and remember influenza can cause pneumonia, is currently the seventh leading cause of death in the whole of South Africa. There are approximately about 19,000 uh, deaths from pneumonia uh, every year. And it's the incidence or the prevalence is even higher in uh, younger individuals, in adolescents, and also in adults uh, from about the age of about 15 um, and, and uh, older because of the fact that HIV infection is a main risk factor and driver of the occurrence of uh, pneumonia. So if you are living with HIV and you're not able to uh, control your CD4 count, if you're not on antiretroviral drugs, pneumonia suddenly becomes a real risk to you. Yes, it does. I mean, the lower your CD4 count, the greater the risk of pneumonia. The higher your CD4 count, um, it, uh, the lower the risk of pneumonia. So low CD4 count, high risk. Higher CD4 count, lower risk but not no risk. So it's always important to be aware of symptoms that may be due to pneumonia. Are there some clusters of cases or places where we find that there are more cases of pneumonia than others, or is it you know, evenly spread? No, um, you're absolutely right. There are areas where people are kind of clustered together. There's a greater risk of pneumonia. So one of the issues that led to the develop many of the developments in uh, pneumonia research in South Africa related to the very high incidence of pneumonia that there was on the gold mines. But individuals who live in barracks, for example, army recruits and so on, people who are in prisons uh, where there's close contact with others, um, those kind of issues are associated with the higher prevalence of pneumonia. So is it simply about people just living too closely together in bad conditions? You have one case of pneumonia and, and you know, it's a bit like tuberculosis perhaps in some ways. It's not just that. It's, um, I mean, one of the things we know that a lot of pneumonia occurs mainly during winter. So one of the issues is influenza and viral infections, even the common cold, Put you at risk but what do we do during winter we huddle together maybe around the fire or around the heater so it's a combination of those but there are lots of risk factors um, for pneumonia what makes you more likely apart from living with hiv to catch pneumonia i mean what are the risk factors that that really lead to it so it's people living closely together it's i presume uh, bad conditions i presume also poor health care it's not caught in time yeah, so um, among the issues are age, the very young, particularly children under the age of five, and the older individuals or the elderly. Um, in the global studies, particularly individuals over the age of 70 years. And then in younger adults, for example, it relates uh, commonly to underlying medical illnesses. Uh, chronic heart disease, chronic lung disease, diabetes, 
and a whole host of conditions that are what we call immunocompromised conditions. So that includes HIV, but it also includes things like uh, malignancies and transplant patients and so on. And if you look at the population, and the other thing I need to mention is smoking. Smoking is a significant risk factor, even in an otherwise healthy individual, for pneumonia. Um, I mean, there's also, it seems, that air pollution can play a role. You mentioned smoking. I imagine there's a link between that and air pollution. We have some of the worst uh, areas in the world in terms of air pollution around Mpumalanga, for example. Is that a big factor here? So it's only more recently that we're starting to fully understand the impact of air pollution on a number of chest diseases, uh, including asthma and chronic bronchitis or emphysema or COPD, as doctors call it, and also infections. What appears to be very important, more so than just general environmental pollution, but we don't know enough of that, is particularly, um, per, uh, you know, uh, pollution within households, for example, households that use uh, braziers for heating and uh, for cooking and so on. So intense household pollution, for example, and smoking in the household, say parents, is a risk factor for pneumonia, certainly. And I mean, it's easy, it's one thing to, to feel sick, it's one thing to have a child in the house who's, who's just not well. How do you know if someone's got pneumonia? Because pneumonia, I mean, you know, as you say, we lose many, many people every year to it. It's incredibly dangerous. Yes, it can be, certainly. And uh, one of the things is that the earlier you make the diagnosis and the sooner you treat it, the better the likely outcome. So people need to be aware of symptoms. And symptoms include things like cough, and coughing up uh, sputum or pus, uh, chest pain, shortness of breath, uh, and fever obviously is very important. And if one has those constellation of symptoms, it's very important to present early to uh, a healthcare clinic or a healthcare worker, uh, your general practitioners or uh, a hospital in order for them to make the diagnosis as soon as possible, in order to institute therapy as soon as possible. Um, do you find that people wait too long before they get treatment? I mean, is that a problem? Um, it can be a problem. And one of the things we know is that the COVID pandemic has made people reluctant to present uh, early to their practitioners or to the hospitals because of concerns of um, uh, you know, becoming infected with COVID. So it's very important. There are telephonic options to phone in and speak to an individual, uh, for example, through the National Institute of Communicable Diseases uh, to discuss these issues. Um, but we do know that in developing countries in general, there tends to be a delay between people getting symptoms and presenting to a healthcare professional or facility uh, for numerous reasons, including costs and distances and so on. But yes, the best option is present as soon as possible if you have the kind of symptoms I've mentioned. I mean, this is one of those diseases where we're really we need to talk about it. There's a lot of research going on about it. But you also need to make sure that people act quickly when there's a concern. If we do that, we'll be able to save a lot more lives. Yeah, absolutely. In a disease that tends to get overshadowed by other more commonly known conditions, such as TB, HIV, and so on, this is a condition that needs to be highlighted because it in itself is a very important cause of disease and death. Professor, thank you very much indeed. I really do appreciate the time. Uh, Professor Feldman there, he's a pulmonologist in the Department of Internal Medicine at Wits University. Professor, thank you very much indeed.